Hello and welcome to Informed Entrepreneur Magazine. My name is Mike Baumstark. Uh, I'm the Executive Director of Informed Entrepreneur and I also am a small business owner myself. Today we're interviewing Jeff Wu of Agent Knows Homes. Welcome Jeff. Thank you. Good to see you. All right Jeff, we're, we're going to try to stump you a little bit in this, con in this conversation, see if we can come up with something you don't know how to answer. I'm just joking. Uh, so we're going to learn about Jeff, his business, and uh, maybe give you all some insights as to how something Jeff does would be interesting for you to do, or you may want to call Jeff later and say, how did you do that or whatever. But let's start out with this. Where did you come from originally? I uh, grew up in uh, Columbia, Maryland. Okay. And uh, how did you wind up in this area? Yeah, that's a, a great question. I hope this answer isn't too long-winded, but okay. ended up in Virginia by way of Manhattan. Wow. My uh, wife and I were up there, and when we decided to come back uh, to be with family and also look at real estate opportunities, um, everything down here is interwoven, so when you get work, it, it happened to be in Northern Virginia. Is that right? Now, how did you actually get into the real estate world? You know, I'd always been fascinated with real estate as something that's tangible, something you can touch, and something that you can create wealth from passively and, and for years to come. So I wanted to be uh, a real estate investor. Okay, All right. But you're not just an investor, you actually are a person who sells and, and manages mm -hmm. real estate? What, is it, Correct. what do you do exactly? So um, we help others to buy, sell, invest, and also uh, do property management with residential real estate. Okay. So is there anything different about you, what you do as opposed to any other realtor? Is there anything different about your business? Uh, you sound like you're more on the invest, help people invest side. Is that true? Or you just do general work? You know, there's a lot of differences, but they're not necessarily with our niches. Okay. It's more about our attitude and how we do our business. Well, share that with me then. Definitely. So one thing I'm really proud of is when you walked in, you saw a values wall. It's uh, Yes, I did. I, I stopped to read it, actually. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So we're really proud of that as a, as a team and as a company. We have some core values that we all share, and, and we want to serve the client as what's important to them, not just another transaction. So Good. Well, we'll get a shot of the wall as part of our... Uh, Back, background video of your place here. Excellent. Um, and so, other than the, that change as to philosophy, I see some of the statements. We do this by serving you. We work with people, not transaction. We strive to exceed expectations always. Those are those are very encouraging uh, comments. Does the average person walking in the door have a sign that says, Welcome, Mike Bombstar? Yes. Yeah. So, we also try to systematize kind of little things that, that seem to make a big difference to our clients' process. Yes. We're going above and beyond many different ways, but a lot of times what they notice is the littlest thing, that we had a bottle of water for them, or that when they came in, they had a welcome sign with their name on it. They've been here never before, so when they arrive, it makes them feel, oh, I'm in the right place, we spelled their name right, and they're just excited to kind of get going. Yeah, so, very good. Actually, I came in, I saw this sitting area. Is this a sitting area that you might come in and, and chat with someone initially, or would you use a conference room or something like that? You know, either or. Uh, we want to be comfortable for whoever they are. We've okay. got two Apple TVs set up, so we can actually do our presentations here from what we call our lounge area okay. or in our conference room. We're okay. very technology-focused, but also very relationship-focused, so we want them to be comfortable. Excellent. Now, what would be the presentation you're referring to that people would see on the Apple TV? You know, it depends what their situation is. It okay. could be a... Uh, so you mean it's like a proposal or here's here's what we think you should do type thing? Uh, possibly, or even uh, working with a new buyer, helping them understand the steps to, to home ownership. Okay. Uh, or even a seller in, you know, what their home needs to do to, to maximize value. Sounds to me like people would like that because I think sometimes we in various professions sort of assume that people have the working knowledge to go ahead and start working. Mm -hmm. So that that's probably for some people a, a wonderful thing to say, give me a baseline of what this is all about. Is that true? Very true. A lot of people don't know what they don't know. So it really helps kind of set the stage and make sure we're on the same page for going forward. Excellent. All right. Uh, tell me, um, well, first off, how long have you been in your business here? You know, we opened this location uh, just about a year ago, okay. but we, as a team, have been doing real estate sales business for just about 11 years now. Okay, excellent. And is it just in this area or another area? We're licensed Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, and uh, we have referral partners all over the country. We are a member of three top producing networks that do business a specific way, okay. not only a uh, high level of business, but also taking care of the client as a relationship, as an advocate. And, and serving them at a high level. So we want to make sure 
that when we have a client moving to another part of the country, we'll partner them up with someone who does business the way we do, not someone who just sells one house a year, someone who cares about the client and is yes. going to be there for them. Well, that's fantastic. All right. Um, so over the years you've been in business, uh, could you share with us one or two areas that you have felt maybe were the most difficult obstacles at being entrepreneurial? You know, that's a great question. I think um, for me, one of the toughest challenges has been adding adding team members um, because as an entrepreneur, you have all these great ideas and you, you see what you want to do. And it's it's challenging when you add those other people for them to see that vision, but also for them to kind of have a sense of accountability for a vision that might not have been theirs. And then also to find um, trust from yourself to allow that other person the freedom to do what needs to be done. Because so many of us as entrepreneurs have only had ourselves and, and maybe find it easy to become a micromanager. But if you're doing that, you're really not freeing up yourself the way that these team members are supposed to allow you to, to succeed even more. That's a, that's a very common discussion. Uh, there's sort of a, a joke uh, among people that work with business owners or that are in business themselves, and it is, I would really enjoy what I do except for the people, <laughs> and uh, which is a stupid statement. But it really is true. You know, if you could sit at your desk and just work on the computer, mm. uh, and I do think some some people in business wind up spending too much time at their desk because of the difficulty of working with people. I mean, I, I probably have fallen into that myself. Uh, but the rewards are with actually serving people and seeing success occur for them. Yes. So it's kind of worth the risk. Is there any other difficulty you would share with us, or shall I move on to the successful things you have experienced? You know, I, I think one other difficulty which blends into a success is, um, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, I, I feel, are what we would call free spirits in their personality. Yes. And that maybe has brought them success, has brought them ideas, but in my case, it also is a, is a challenge because a higher level of success won't come unless you create discipline in yourself. Yes. You know, it's just like you're not going to be healthy if you just go to the gym when you feel like it. You need to go to the gym every day. I'm really sad to hear that because I thought I could get away with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the uh, the E Myth book, which is a classic in, in business forever, uh, is true so many times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I see so many people who are good at what they do, but putting this whole thing together, discipline wise, system wise, and being held accountable, is a a major flaw in many small businesses mm -hmm. that I've, I've observed. So I'd agree with you there. Uh, and uh, let's move on to couple of things that you feel like you've been successful, it may be addressing those two issues you told me mm -hmm. about or something else, but a, a couple of areas that you've seen some success. You know, kind of relating back to those challenges specifically, I've been very fortunate to, to find and hire and surround myself with some people who are just excellent in terms of, of the quality of, of their self as a person because we can train people to learn a computer system or train people what kind of paperwork we like to use. But you can't train someone to be a good person. Yeah. So once I found some excellent people and, and gave them the freedom to do what needed to be done, it, it's just launched my business to another level. And yes. I'm so fortunate to have the people that I do have now. That's great. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot, not in, not in just our, the scenario we're discussing here, but, but in general, uh, a person with a good attitude who's willing to be educated and trained mm -hmm. It's worth far more than a top-level educated person who's read every book there is and doesn't have the personality or the worth, work ethic or the ability to be taught. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. yes. I agree. And and it seems that these days it's harder and harder to find people that are like that. You know, I think if you have the right attitude and, and you know what you're looking for, yeah. it's... Um, they're, they're there. They're there. Yeah. A lot of people aren't specific enough. I, I want someone with positive energy, with, with strong values and... Um, when you're looking for, for those specific traits, you, you can definitely you can find them. Good. Uh, is there a, a source uh, for finding people that you've found to be reliable, or is it just networking, asking, interactions, or what? Is there any kind of a methodology that you use for that? You know, I, I haven't found a specific source, but uh, just like you said, you know, with, with the dialogues, if you're asking for the traits that you're looking for and, and being as specific as possible, another thing is, We've found a lot of success in uh, reviewing people's personalities because depending what the role they're doing, you know, are they out there interacting with a lot of people or are they more behind the scenes and, 
and you, you can't afford for details to get missed. You know, those are different personality traits and skill sets. So we have found success kind of narrowing down what is that person um, like and how should they be wired and then looking more specifically in, in that focus. And uh, not to dwell too much on this, but just one last question about that. Um, do you feel like you figure out through your interview process, is this person the right person? Uh, or have you found that uh, it takes more than just an interview? It takes some testing or it takes some, you know, more stringent uh, vetting? That's, a, that's a, a good question. We try to do a certain level of screening. So we actually have some personality tests we ask them to take even before we meet. Okay. So once we do meet, hopefully they're within the, the you know, the 20% of, of what we might be looking for. Yeah. And then those candidates we meet, we kind of fine tune and uh, hopefully pick the best of the bunch. Fantastic. And is there another area that you believe you have uh, uh, noticed success or you're pleased with that you'd share with us? You know, definitely, um, again, going back to that same challenge, that, that other item is going to be uh, the systems. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of the things as I started to have success as an individual, I knew what I was doing up here. You know, I had my own recipes, but I never really wrote them down. Yes. As I grew and as I hired others, you know, in order for them to, to do it the same way, you can't assume that they know what you're thinking. So you have to have a system or uh, operating procedure for almost every little thing. You know, whether it be the way you open up the office or the way you interact with a new buyer or or the way that we market someone's home to the very best exposure possible. Um, you know, we really need a, a, a protocol for everything. So taking the time to document those things and then train them and uh, and be ready to go. So every team member, if I go to the beach or if I'm with another client, we know that all of us are going to do things the same way. Excellent. Now, is there a system that you use such as Microsoft Dynamics uh, or uh, another CRM that, that you have uh, stumbled on that you really like? Um, we have our own uh, CRM Pro proprietary system okay. that we use. It's it's very real estate focused. Okay, um, but beyond that, I haven't um, taken the time to really go out and and I guess see what other options are out there. Well, I mean, if it's working well and there's people that are giving you accountability feedback on it, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wouldn't recommend you waste any time, frankly. Uh, all right. In in closing and summarizing, um, could you maybe share with our audience um, a point of philosophy or just a jewel that you would share with people in business, thinking about business, um, that are listening. My pleasure. Um, you know, three things that I've, I've found great value in are, uh, are positive energy. Uh, people want to work with someone who's happy and upbeat and that they enjoy being around. Our uh, consistency. So, uh, again, people want to work with someone who they know what they can expect. Not that uh, one day you're going to be this and the other day you're going to be that. They want to know that, you know, you're pretty even keel and are going to perform uh, with what they expect. And then lastly, really do your best, whether it's you, your clients, your family, to put yourself in a position to succeed. Um, you know, schedule the appointments during the right time of day, have all the tools you need, and and be prepared. Very good. That's excellent. Well, Jeff, I've really enjoyed interviewing you. I, I learned some things today myself. And uh, if you want to know more about what Jeff does or some of the things he discussed on the video today, uh, there'll be some credits at the end where you can shoot them an email. Uh, I'm sure Jeff would take a phone call here and there uh, if someone wants to chat a little bit. Uh, and certainly if you're looking for real estate assistance uh, in, in the area Jeff's in or any other place and you are stumped at finding somebody who has those qualities Jeff has shared with us, then please feel free to contact Jeff. Thank you for joining us today on Informed Entrepreneur and uh, we'll see you next time.